Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Batman the Animated Series. This show started in 1992. I believe they did a lot of work to get the first season, 65 episodes done. Arguably the best animated series and also the best comic book animated series. I'm a big fan of Batman comics. One of my favorite characters ever is Robin, Dick Grayson, who becomes Nightwing. I really have a deep history with comic books. If you've heard some of my other podcasts, I've collected comic books for years. I stopped in around 2008, 2010 in that area of time. But ever since I was a child, little kid, my grandfather would give me a comic book. I was always into them, really happy about the movie adaptions. And in 1992, I'm about 21 years old. Crazy time in my life. But this show was solid from the beginning. Everything is amazing. The way it's filmed and animated. The style they went for. The tone. The music. Just phenomenal. The voice acting. Legendary. The actors in this, uh, Kevin Conroy is Batman, and just, I could spend a whole 10 minutes of the podcast just talking about all the actors that are in it doing voice work. Just great stuff. I love the noir, or whatever you call it, the crime noir feel of the show, the way they decided to handle topics, and when I talked about my X-Men animated series podcast, in a way that's one of my favorites also, but... It's adaptions of certain comic book elements really stood out and were well done and epic. So you're dealing with galaxy spanning, world changing, universe changing events to some extent. Batman is a more back alley, crime ridden, down to earth, street level type of uh, adventures. Now, the Justice League, that's different. So that's where, like, there are so many adaptions that the Batman animated series did in, in its own way. But they weren't the epic things in the grand scale of bombastic uh, powers. It's one thing to envision yourself with Optic Blast or Gambit's power, Wolverine. And it's another to just be the um, disciplined peak human who is Batman who goes around fighting crime. And as I've said, Robin, one of my favorite characters ever, is an important part of the show after two seasons. At the end, I think, of the second season, they renamed the show The Adventures of Batman and Robin. The development and character progression, the growth on the show is the best. I would even say it's better than anything. I mean, I'll give respect to The Simpsons, which I don't watch. I never really watched it. And there were episodes over the years that caught my attention, and I'm really into those. So those are great. Those are fun. But I'm not a Simpsons guy who watches it every week. This show showed progression and a growth. There were heavy tones, fun tones, a little bit of corniness here and there, campy. But for the most part, it stuck to its guns. It showed real growth in a way that has been is the best to date. I, I don't think there's a better way of bringing a comic book character to life in the animated series than the Batman the Animated Series show, which, like I said, progressed to Bat Adventures of Batman and Robin, uh, the new animated series. This thing was a juggernaut that continued to snowball, giving a foundation for some great DC animation. DC is hands down the best at it. Although I have gripes here and there, they're not all hits. But like the Marvel MCU, you get such a standard quality that even the ones that don't really hold up the bar and aren't that great, they don't really ruin the whole 
message, the whole feeling of trust with an organization like, let's say, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you're going to get a good movie for the most part. And Batman the Animated Series did that. It set the foundation. It gave the go-ahead to try other things. And Superman was um, part of the... You know, after a while, it came out with Bruce Tim, all the Justice League cartoons, most of the animation over the years. And I do have a gripe with the art, for the most part, on Justice League and stuff. And, and I've described that on my X-Men. This, I have no problems with. It works. It blends in perfectly. They had some great episodes that really hit home. They really, you really feel the weight of it. There's visual styles that are just um, iconic that you can bring out. I would say it's based more on the uh, Tim Burton movies, Batman and uh, what is it, Batman Returns with the Penguin and Catwoman. And it brings that Gotham to life. It brings the rogues gallery to life. I think this is done more for comic books than the reverse with any other cartoon show. This is a great opening to Batman. It's a origin story portion that really hits home and it's probably the best adaption of his origin. And going back to my love of Robin in the comic books, there's no other character like him, in my opinion. So Batman is about eight years old. His parents die. He goes through turmoil and eventually becomes Batman. And we all know that that story. Robin is about the same age, eight or nine. His parents are killed. And he's trained by Batman. And he's already primed as he's a, a circus performer. So he's already athletic, got the, the body and the discipline for it. And then Batman trains you. That growth from a child in the, what is it, the late 30s, the 40s, over the years has been a deep well of inspiration for stories that connected with me as a, as a child. I love the Adam West Batman show on TV. Him and Robin, they introduced Batgirl. I don't mind campy, corny, funny, serious, dark. It all works for me. Batman is great in that aspect. You can use so many styles and genres with him. But Robin progresses as a child and through the comics becomes a teenager, becomes a adult in his own right out of Batman's shadow. And to me, that's the the gem in all of comics. I don't see that anywhere in any series. Now, maybe there is some here and there that just um, escape me right now. But when you think about it, Batman, you get into his character, you watch his origin story and some of the flashback type things, and even in the comics. But Robin is the beginning and middle, and now you're at a point, let's say, with Nightwing that Batman would have been in when he first started. So I see that as gold. I see that as uh, the epitome of writing and growth for a character. Never been done. How many years? That's 60, 70 years of Batman. Robin started as a child. Even his origin, he gets uh, his parents die in the circus. Batman takes him in. And now you go read comics and he's Nightwing and uh, the Titans are his team, which the show is pretty good. Uh, I, did, I did a podcast on it. But the animated series, in my opinion, if I had to give a critical rating, is the best. If I want it to be not the feels that X-Men gives me, because I like the cosmic aspect, the powers that are um, unusual and um, world-changing. There might be more of an affinity for that for me in the, in the sense that I, I just love comic books. I love I role play every week, more than once a week sometimes. I use the Roll Die 20 site and I use the Marvel Saga system to adapt for any 
comic book world series, even I talked about this before, westerns, Star Trek, Star Wars. So I'm always into that mindset, and although I might not want to always play a street-level vigilante, you can't argue that the show didn't do it well, possibly the best, so if I had to give a um, objective score, no feelings and bias put in, Batman the Animated Series is probably the best cartoon animation ever made. It's consistency, it's, uh, it's style, everything lent to its respectable criticism, it's awards. The show has won numerous awards. Big ones too, we can get into some of the other little ones, but the characters in this show are done amazingly. They introduced Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, and let's talk about Mark Hamill's performance as the Joker. Granted, I'll give Mark Hamill's career, um, you know, shaky ground, you know, we all know hand solo, Harrison Ford blew up, Carrie Fisher to a certain extent, but Luke Skywalker really, Mark Hamill. I'm sure he was getting some work, but the rumors and the whispers of him doing voice work and coming up with this Joker blew me away when I finally saw the result. And he has gotten all the fame he deserves. He deserves more. So kudos to Mark Hamill bringing the Joker to life. And like I said, this is a this is a weird thing. This is a cartoon that. Improves the comic books in a way. And yes, it's one portrayal, it's a one style, but it just was able to impact so many people. There are people who love this show, kids growing up, adults, anybody can watch it. And I think that in the end, with the popularity of superhero movies, comic books are going to be around in a sense where I think the money will be just funded to them. It'll be, you know, safe money that they make from these movies. And but DC doesn't do that well in that case. And its animation department is amazing. And I think this is where they're going to really shine. And their movies might not be the place to go where you're going to depend on a good movie, you know, because they'll be hit or miss, although I loved Wonder Woman. I enjoy Shazam. Aquaman's all right. It's just a League movie was in. But you can go to DC's animated line, and most likely you're going to get some really good stuff. Uh, Bruce Tim should get credit for this, although I get a little complaining about the art that he decided to keep continuing. But for this show, it doesn't matter. I don't think my nitpicks about the Justice League cartoon and most of the DC line has any merit here. Because it just works. It, and it works on every level. Especially when you got the music, the feel of things, the way they decided to put technology in and different variations. It all works. And like I said, I think it could be considered the best cartoon, hands down, um, in the top three, top two. I mean, personally, I can go, you know, I can get a little, you know, broaden my horizons on other things, but consistency matters in, in, in this case. I love that they really took the time and changed some things. We've got Holly Quinn, who was introduced in the show. So popular, they put her in the comic books. And that's a rare thing, if it's ever been done before. The cartoon is so popular, they make a character, joke is uh, sidekick, I guess, is like his Robin. And she blows up. She is super popular. Movies now. And the Suicide Squad. It's just... 
What the show is able to do. Can't say enough good things about it. Even the side characters, and they did a great juggling act of highlighting different characters at different times. And something like Batman's would be just a presence. And just endless fun, supporting cast, and voice work. It just works on so many levels. I think there's going to be a long running love for this show that'll never fade. Besides people who love comic books, they love um, every, anything Batman in general. You know, its logo, the theme of him being a human vigilante, he doesn't have powers. It's always going to work. And when you have something like this that is back, uh, backlog, you can go back and look. And you're going to be amazed. You're just going to love it. It's going to enrich the mythos of Batman, the lore. And there are progressions from this that I might not do podcasts on, but Batman Beyond. There's uh, the Batman. I mean, this just kept going in different iterations. And they would really make an impact with some of the characters like Robin and his clashing with Batman. And just seeing the new Robins come in. I love it. I think the show is amazing. I recommend it to everybody. There are so many adaptions that if you're a fan of the comic that they did well. And like I said, maybe not as, um, you know, blockbustery as like you would think of an X-Men with the Phoenix, which is to me the best. It's just got great criticism. It's won tons of awards, daytime Emmys and just in general, the music going with Danny Elfman and in the, in this show, you feel it pick you up. It becomes a part of you which doesn't stand out, which is, I think, when it's done the best, when the music is just, uh, it just highlights moments. The show is amazing. I recommend it to everybody. There are ways you can watch it, the DVDs. This thing spawned everything back in the day when it first came out. Video games are based just on its style. Comic book lines just on its style. And it, a generation grows up on... This is their Batman. This is now more than... This will be probably two generations now. And no matter what comic book run you're looking at, video game, you can go back and watch this show, and I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll be impressed. I think you'll see the work that was put into this by everybody. And I got to give them credit. A lot of credit. You can, I can go back and watch it. If it's on, I watch it. It doesn't matter. Everything about the show works on so many levels. It's just, you know, amazing that it was able to be done so well, and then it kept going. And it kept trying a couple of new things here and there. There were some things that were rumored that I wish it would have done. You know, when you go, and I write my little outline, I go look and check out some of the, uh, you know, Wikipedia stuff and all that things, and there's like heavier stuff they wanted to do, and you know you can't do everything like that. And, you know, you're going after a certain uh, age range, but if you're gonna try to play it safe, but take a you know, get your core audience and get the interest of people not in that range. Another reason why the show is one of the best or the best. I mean, you'll get your outliers here and there, but I don't think there's adults that would hit on the show. The more deeper, more adult things will not bother young children watching it. I think out of all the gunshots in the show, I think Commissioner Gordon gets shot once, and I think it was a big thing at the company with the uh, you know producers and stuff like that. But Family, friendship, uh, second chances, villainy, it's just amazing. And this noir atmosphere, it just works. You got blimps and ways of using black and white. It's just, it's an epic show. I recommend it to everybody. 
And I guess this is where I'll start wrapping it up. Batman the Animated Series and it's going into the adventures of Batman and Robin. And I'm not sure if it was the last half of season two, which was like 20 episodes. They, they got like three companies together to do the first 65 to put it out of season one. I think at the time that gave it syndication, it did season two with 20. And then it progressed and morphed and it kept the voice talent. It kept the music. It kept the heart of the show without destroying the foundation. Batman comic books, Batman lore, lunch boxes, Legos, the video games, all owe a big debt to this show. Other cartoons owe a debt to this show, in a, in a way, in my opinion. Maybe these aren't things I'm going to be able to prove, but this show has got everything. It's critically acclaimed, fun, deep in it at points, and it really will sometimes pull at your heartstrings in a good way. So I hope everybody gives it a chance. If you're into animation or you're a Batman fan and you've never watched this, watch it now. I implore you. If it's just something you've been thinking about, still watch it. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. I hope you enjoy it like I did. It's a big part of my uh, past growing up. I was in the heart of collecting comics. And I hope everybody will have a happy holidays. If this is before or after the new year, during, I'm not sure when I'll be putting them out in what order. But I wish everybody the best. These are tough times. Difficult times for some. And I wish you all the best. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.